Hey, girlfriends, welcome to another episode of Girlfriends and Goals. We're your hosts, Miosha and Samaria. This podcast is a space where we'll talk about friendships, life goals, a little bit of pop culture, and all things womanhood. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about if marriage is still a goal. And it's based off of two like conversations that were recently had, um, one with Michelle Obama, this one's a little bit older, and the other one um, was some like comments that were made by Lala Anthony. So we definitely have a good episode in store. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please go ahead and leave us a five-star rating and write a review. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, make sure you're subscribed and give this video a thumbs up. All right, so we're going to hop right into the topic. And I'll start by reading some of what Michelle Obama said and get your thoughts on it. Okay. All right. Okay. So she said, as an adult, I've lived in a number of places, but as far as I'm concerned, I've only had one real home. My home is my family. My home is Barack. Aw. All right. But here's the thing. Our marriage has never been perfectly 50-50. One of us is always needing more or giving more. We have to be willing to listen to each other honestly and without defensiveness. Only then can we evolve together. Over the years, a lot of young people have asked me about marriage. And my response usually goes something like this. You have to prepare yourself for long stretches of discord and discomfort. That was the part people weren't here for. Um, she said, you have to learn how to make real compromises in the way you've lived as an individual. Glamorizing a relationship while you're dating will lead you straight to, difficult, oh, to difficulty once you're married. You can't paper over problems when you're living with someone day in and day out. Okay, so mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that whole thing? <laughs> wow. Uh, so... I would say I agree with about 95% of that. Okay. What's uh, the, the 5% that you Yeah, mean? the 5% <laughs> that I don't agree with mm -hmm. is the long stretches of discomfort and being unhappy. Um, yeah, I don't know that I would necessarily agree with that part. Uh, but yeah, I think she's right in that a lot of times we go into relationships or marriage and there's this romanticized view of what day-to-day -day life will look like. I know in some of the other commentaries, she talked about how things really changed for them when they had kids mm -hmm. and how that was just a, a rough season. She specifically quoted the first 10 years, mm -hmm. which is a long time. But I think that there is truth in that for some couples, they go into marriage and there maybe isn't much conversation or thoughts around what your day-to-day -day life or lifestyle will look like. And so she specifically talked about just managing the kids and how a lot of it was falling on her and that he had a lot more flexibility and freedom that started to breed some resentment. And so I do think that there is truth in that if you're not maybe having certain conversations up front mm -hmm. about what that season will look like. And also if when you're in it, one or both people aren't willing or open maybe to making adjustments to improve the situation, then yeah, it can lead to long stretches of being uncomfortable. Um, but I will say that I think that, um, depending on who you're partnered with and what the overall situation looks like, um, I do think that there is room for where, when things are uncomfortable for there to be improvement, if both parties are willing to put the work in, uh, to make that happen. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Okay, so I do want to clarify because she she didn't say the word unhappy, so I don't want to put that in there, but um I guess discomfort could be unhappiness. I just I just I don't know that I would want to say that, but um I agree with it mostly. I'm also not married at this stage, so, you know, 
take what I say with a grain of salt, but I have seen a lot of marriages around me and a lot of long-term marriages, like 20, 30, 40 years, you know? And so uh, I do think that is absolutely true. And one of the things that I think plays into this is there are periods of discomfort, even as someone who's not attached to anybody else. Like you have long periods of discomfort when you want something else for yourself that isn't quite materialized where you are currently, or you're trying to figure out what your next move is, what you're passionate about, how you want to handle certain situations. Like we have discomfort just because we're human. And so I can imagine that if there's discomfort as someone who isn't attached to another person, there got to be discomfort in that because now you're not only not happy with what's going on with you, but you have this other person who you are kind of, um, well, I'll just say attached to again, but you know, like you have some responsibility in a relationship. You can't just curl up in a ball for that entire period of discomfort. You have to still interact with this person. So that's why I think what she said is likely true. Um, because we're we're humans and we're evol evolving by ourselves anyway, though in another person, there has to be a lot of difficulty. Uh, I think if there are several long stretches of discomfort, that's probably dangerous, but then it all depends on who the couple is and what the stretch of discomfort surrounds. So for them, it was kids and his work schedule and, you know, her feeling like, okay, well, if you're not going to be here by this time, I'm over here uncomfortable mm -hmm. trying to make sure they stay up so that you can come and take care of them. I'm just going to put them to bed and do what goes well with my schedule because I'm the one who's in charge since you're out there working or doing whatever. So yeah, that that's kind of my thought on it. Yeah. Um, also, so when she talked about how things are never 50-50, I think the period of time also matters as well, where there are times where you may have to give a little bit more or the other person has to give more. And I think maybe when you're newer in a relationship and you just haven't had certain things that have kind of like pushed you mm -hmm. to have to give more. And I think the example of kids is a great example that requires, it really pushes your partnership, I think harder than a lot of other things uh, early on in a marriage, uh, especially if you have kids right away, but it really tests you in ways that you probably haven't had to flex or use certain skills in. Um, or couldn't even anticipate, maybe. Maybe. Um, but I do think though that just depending on the couple and kind of what their situation was like leading up until that time for them, it was kids. It could be financial stress. It could be other things, yeah. but I do think that um, go even going into it with a realistic view. Cause she talked about how couples are really ready to kind of throw in the towel at the first like shaking of whatever the relationship is. Mm -hmm. And I think just having a realistic expectation of like, okay, a partnership is not going to be perfect. It's not going to look pretty all the time. Yeah. You're not always going to get your way. Uh, but I do think the long stretches 10 years is a long time. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So what I found interesting was like the responses to this on Twitter. So I pulled a few to read to you just to see what you're going to say about them. Uh, okay. So the first person said, as great as she is, people have to accept the fact that Michelle did a lot of the same sacrificing of her personal desires that most women do. She comes from that era. <laughs> that, I don't know why that was funny to me. She comes from that era. Only difference was Barack materialized into something worthwhile. Thoughts? Hmm. Yeah, the mommy tax, that's what I've heard it referred to as definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I don't know. I think it's the word sacrificing. Okay. That's throwing me off a little bit. Uh, and so in their situation, specifically, she's this person, I think, is referencing how Michelle, you know, she's well educated. I believe she was a lawyer, went to law mm -hmm. school herself, well accomplished. Her husband, I guess she allowed him to his career to take the front seat while she focused on raising the children or being the primary caregiver early on. Mm -hmm. And so 
I think for some women, they would see that as a sacrifice, but for others, it could be that that's what they want to do in that season. Okay. So I, I can see it both ways in that, you know, if you really have these desires to, you know, go practice law, then you may look at it as a sacrifice. But if in that season, your desire is to be with your children, then you maybe won't see it as a sacrifice. That's interesting. Um, yeah, and I will say that could also change. So do I think law school Michelle Obama maybe thought that would be what she would do? I don't know, but it could have changed at some point. We don't really, we don't really know. Yeah. And being a parent, it does unfortunately fall more. The responsibility does fall more on the mom. And I, I really hate that, but it, it just does. Um yeah. And and I say that because I do know, like we're talking about Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. uh, but I do know for some women, they yearn for that time to be with their children. Mm -hmm. And so they just see it a little bit different. But I also think maybe your experience is leading up into that point. And then what is your plan for after? Yeah. It just kind of depends on where you are mentally in that season. And sometimes you don't know until they're here. And that could change. You may feel like, oh, I wanted to be home or taking the primary lead on this. and But you really would rather, you know, be pursuing your career. You know, I think about, because we just talked about this last week, but in Love and Basketball, Alfre Woodard's character, mm -hmm. when uh, they had that conversation where she said, I had dreams too, but then I had children and that became my responsibility. And mm -hmm. it seems like, Maybe it was a sacrifice initially, but it was something that she grew to love or something that she saw was necessary. And so she stepped into that role and took over. So yeah, I think people have plans and plans change. Like not oh, yeah, because I see the opposite. I see the opposite too, where working moms mm -hmm. are like, I wish I could be could have been home with my children during that time instead of going right back to work. So I think it just depends. Um, and for Michelle, I I think I don't I don't know if she expressed that it was a sacrifice for her, uh, but the person is implying that it was yeah. at that time. So okay, I'm gonna go to the next person's comment. This one got a lot of buzz uh on Twitter. So she said, Michelle Obama said we have to be prepared for years long stretches. <laughs> of discomfort in romantic partnership and baby I am not and so she also said I appreciate aunties being honest because I don't have it and people were really upset that she said this what do you think on it before I jump in and say my thoughts well I want to hear your thoughts first because no. I've been going first <laughs> why not you go first okay uh I think it's okay for her to say that like, it's okay for her to feel like, okay, if a romantic relationship calls for periods of discomfort, that's not something I want. And like I said, I'm around a lot of people who've been together forever. Nobody in there, well, maybe some people, but I will say like the first two years, three years, four years, five years, like, you know, for a lot of people can be, um, I don't want to say easy, but I think the more time that you're with someone, the more opportunity there is for that discomfort to come in. And so I can understand someone being like, I don't want that. <laughs> like whether it's 10 mm -hmm. years from now, 15 years from now or 20 years from now, I just don't want to experience it. And so I thought it was interesting that people were so upset with her for saying that, but I would rather her acknowledge that now than get into something and, and realize how, how hard it is because others have romanticized marriage and then realize, uh, actually, I'm not prepared for this. This isn't something that I want. Yeah. What I thought with that comment was that, okay, discomfort is there right? It, it's going to be a part of any partnership relationship. Marriage requires work. But I think uh, the person who made this comment, I don't know that they weren't here for discomfort. I think it was the long stretches of discomfort. And I think 
she's more than within her right right to have that thought mm-hmm. and opinion up front and it's like you said it's better to know that than not I also think that it's different to be in a period of discomfort and there's no work or effort or conversations around improving the situation Mm -hmm. versus just keeping it the same and so that's the first thing I thought of is that okay it's not that she's not expecting to not be uncomfortable it's that there has to be maybe progress made to improve it. And if not, then that's a relationship I don't want to have. Do we, I guess, are we, um, okay. So when I read the Michelle Obama thing, one of the things that came to my mind was just because it's a, a long period of discomfort, there does that doesn't mean that there's no like joy in that period. Does that make sense? Like, it's hard for me to imagine that you're in a relationship with someone who you like and love and every single day you hate them for 10 years. And so I think I would like, if if I could ask Michelle Obama a question, I would wanna know what, what do those periods of discomfort look like? Because if it's a thing where it's like, oh, every day for 10 years, I was pissed, then that's different from, okay, we were in, a period where dealing with the kids was a lot for me, but I still loved his sense of humor. He still, you know, brought me gifts. I still thought he was the most brilliant man. I still enjoyed supporting him. He still supported me in some ways. Mm -hmm. We had those conversations. And even despite those conversations, the period was still uncomfortable. Like, so I imagine not every single day was uncomfortable for 10 years. And so when I think of period of discomfort, that's, I don't know, I guess maybe I'm trying to make it sound better, but I just can't, I just personally can't imagine every single day for 10 years, you're like pissed and uncomfortable. No, I didn't take it as she was pissed and uncomfortable. I just took it as she wasn't happy with the overall situation and maybe not him specifically as a person, but it seemed like there may have been periods of happiness within that, but overall there was this sense of like, okay, this is not really how I want things to be. Uh, I didn't take it as she's like upset every day. Yeah. And I don't, so maybe upset isn't the right word, but maybe like uncomfortable every day. And the reason Mm -hmm. why I, I thought about this is because she's like, okay, I found something that worked out for me, you know, like, okay, you're not coming home. I'm sure it didn't take her 10 years to be like, okay, well, you're not coming home um, in time for for dinner and bedtime. I'm going to still put them to bed. Like, I'm sure it didn't take 10 years to realize that or whatever. So, yeah, I I don't know. I I guess I'm just not seeing periods of discomfort being like, oh, every single day was Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Like, I would imagine. Yeah. Have, you know, I would imagine that they're was still some joy it wasn't like 100% discomfort I'm sure there was like there were some happy times too there were some things that made her feel like oh this relationship is worth continuing despite the discomfort you know because she's because she said that you have to know your person this is a person I still care about Mm -hmm. who's maybe still showing up for me in other ways so she did express that even though there was some discomfort there she knew like okay I love this person I'm kind of seeing the bigger picture because you know your kids are small only but for a period of time Mm -hmm. and so yeah she did acknowledge that because she knew her person and that this is still the person she wanted to be with that for her it was worth it yeah for for me it's important to clarify um, that just because I know that there are people who are in situations where it really isn't worthwhile (laughs) and Mm -hmm. I don't want them to be like oh Michelle said she was uncomfortable for 10 years like yeah but what did that discomfort look like and so that's why for me it's important to maybe get some clarity around what periods of discomfort actually look like uh, so that nobody thinks they have to put up with the worst of the worst because Michelle Obama did it. You know? Yeah. As well as if there is effort 
being made. Like she made those changes to make it better or her partner made the changes like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to adjust. Maybe it can't be perfect, but it'll improve the situation, you know, to kind of hold us over until we can get things to how we both really want it to be. And I think that's where the person who made this comment uh, about uh, like, hey, baby, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I could see a person having the response of, hey, it's not for me, especially if there's no game plan, there's no effort to improve it. Uh, or heck, maybe I'm giving her too much credit and maybe she just meant, I don't want no bad. I don't, I don't want anything bad. <laughs> well, I will say because I, the person who tweeted that does have a platform that I'm kind of familiar with. I don't watch it all the time, but I've seen like a few videos and I do remember like from certain videos, like marriage and kids, like that's not the life that she wants for her. Oh, so, oh, well. Yeah. So I think mean, it's, <laughs> it's on brand and it would make sense. And like I said, I think it's okay for her to be so self-aware that, she knows that and isn't mm-hmm. just chasing something because society says that's what people should be chasing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So last question or last tweet, mm-hmm. and then it kind of goes into my next question, but um, this person says, I can't take any more Michelle Obama sufferation marriage propaganda. I rebuke it. It's boring. Not I rebuke it. Um, it's boring. There's nothing radical about normalizing disproportionate gendered labor placed on women and championing endurance. We are exhausted. God, Santa, Tooth Fairy, anybody save us, please. I can't. (laughs) Oh, man. Mm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. This is, so earlier where I was saying, where I think maybe couples having certain conversations around what their lifestyle is going to look like, the responsibilities, Of course, you don't know exactly how things will play out once you have children, right? Mm -hmm. But at least having some of those conversations up front about expectations, I think for some couples who are able to kind of get their footing a bit to how they want things to be, willing to make changes on the fly once the kids are here. (laughs) But I think it's, it can be important to have those conversations up front. So where this comment is saying, you know, we don't need to normalize the disproportionate gender labor placed on women. When Michelle was talking about how a lot of it fell on her Mm -hmm. while her partner was out, I think it can be a good thing for women to have those conversations up front before the children come so that there's more of an understanding about where you stand, where your partner stands, um, And hopefully by having those conversations that you kind of get it out of the way so that there are, there are minimal surprises to what, how things will be laid out. Yeah. It's, um, it's one of those things that I think is very interesting because even, even when sometimes, and this probably goes to what you were saying about, um, you know, changes on the fly, but even if things are discussed, you really, you just can't predict, you know? So if it's like, oh yeah, I support you in doing this dream. Now I'm out here doing this dream and it's causing some friction. Okay, another conversation needs to be had about, okay, I still want you to chase the dream, but how can we do this in a way that is beneficial to both of us? Or maybe this was a dream that you never even had in the first place, but now it's something that this person wants. Like when you guys sign up to be married and y'all have your idea of like what kids would look like, this dream didn't even come into play. And now it's a new dream that is possible. And so there's some like reconfiguration that needs to occur. Um, yeah. yeah. I I will say um, with the whole like Michelle Obama thing, now I think she's more on the forefront. Like we're seeing her more, hearing from her more. She's writing books and she's doing all this stuff. And he has to, I don't want to say like it's an obligation, but kind of like he has to be, you know, the support. And mm-hmm. I think um, I think it's great that she's having these conversations and that she she's always gotten her shine because she deserves. And even as the supporter, uh, I feel like everybody still was a Michelle Obama stan Mm -hmm. um but yeah I think it's nice that she um is the one who's having more public discourse um Mm -hmm. now you know 
Okay, so what are some of the sacrifices that you've seen women make so their husbands can succeed? And mm. then uh, I have a follow-up question to that, but I'll let you answer. Yeah. So I think one of the sacrifices I've seen is women, even when they're in the workforce, mm -hmm. them maybe not aggressively going after promotions or higher level positions okay. because a lot of the domestic things and the running of the household, the picking the kids up, because women are taking on more of those tasks they're not pushing their bandwidth as much as I see men outside of the home. And so I've seen earlier on in my career where I've met women where it's like, oh, like, hey, you, are you going to go up for that promotion? And they're like, no, you know, I just don't have the extra time. Like, I'd love to do it, but they will require me staying later and I can't stay later because I have to get to the kids. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the things I've seen. Oh, yeah, that's really interesting. You know what I wonder for for some of those women? I'm sure it's not the case for all women, but I wonder if they decide, oh, I'm not going to go for this because they feel some type of responsibility at home to do certain things, you know? Like, I wonder if in some cases, maybe the husband would be a support, but it's already a decision that, the woman has made or, um, you know, the spouse has made not to because they think it'll make things easier. Like it won't, mm -hmm. it won't interfere with how smooth, you know, things are going at home. I, I ask that because I find myself doing that, like not giving other people a chance to say, oh yeah, like I'll support you and just do it. And so if I, as a woman who's not married, I'm already doing that. Like, I wonder how many of us are doing it once we get in these like long-term relationships. Yeah. I don't know. I'm now I'm reflecting if I, if I do that, I, I feel like I'm more the type to just ask. And then you tell me, no. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> like, oh, well, the worst that can happen is no. But like, I think a lot um, of people feel like it's a courtesy, right? So, oh, well, mm -hmm. he has this so in order to support him I'm not gonna go after this you know like, mm. I think it's I think it's like very subtle and very you know it's something that we do subconsciously that we're not aware of or some mm -hmm. might not be aware of um yeah, I could see that yeah so uh I, I don't know what sacrifices I've seen women make I yeah besides maybe moving so a person has a position or oh, yeah. or maybe that. um not working full time so that mm -hmm. someone you know so that the spouse can pursue what they mm -hmm. need to and they can take care of the kids uh, so I, I guess those are the sacrifices I've seen women yeah. make I also yeah. would add uh, I don't know if it's a sacrifice or just a result of living in America and mm -hmm. capitalism, but a lot of people's, I think, hands sometimes are forced to a certain extent where, you know, because of the wage gap and because of the cost of childcare um, and healthcare, that even if people do want to operate at a certain level in terms of their career ambitions, mm -hmm. sometimes situations just provide that it's just not possible mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned child care because I just read this article it was talking about how you know so many women left the workforce during COVID yet child care continued to go up in in certain places especially if you have two to three kids it just doesn't make sense during that time for you to go out and work and then when you compare the wage gap, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, for every hour the mom is out of the house versus the dad, it just may make sense that, okay, if the dad is making more, that's what makes sense. Uh, but I mean, we are seeing more stay-at-home dads now, and sometimes it's the opposite. Yeah, so. depending on what career one goes in um, as opposed to the other. Mm -hmm. Have you seen men make sacrifices for their wives to succeed at the same rate as you've seen like women so I don't think that it's at the same rate mm -hmm. one thing that I have noticed I feel with the millennial generation I have seen this is just my observation of other people's lives I don't know this fully to be true but 
what I've seen, I think is more dads not being as aggressive in their careers so that their wives can simultaneously pursue their career efforts. I've seen that a few times where um, the wife has a higher status position Mm -hmm. and the dad is the one like running the kids to practice and doing certain things uh, while she's able to travel for work. And so, yeah, I have seen more of that with the millennial generation. I haven't seen that with my parents' generation as much. Gotcha. Okay. I think Mm -hmm. of the couples who at least... um, allow allow people in enough to see <laughs> what's going on or of the couples who are willing to share I should say uh, about the ins and outs of their their lives I I've seen quite a few like men say okay well I'll move so that you can have this opportunity because you're pursuing this and this could be a huge mm-hmm. deal for us so um yeah, just within my very close circle, though, I've mm-hmm. seen that happen a few times where it's like, okay, if this is something that you want to pursue, let's figure it out. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, that is something that's really important. If there are things that I'm going to be pursuing, mm-hmm. I would like to see that you're not the type of person who's going to be like, oh, well, you know, I have this, so you can't do that. Or, you know, who's not, who's going to be supportive of me pursuing the things I need to pursue? Like, we'll always make sure it works. But for me, seeing those couples and how that worked for them, I remember thinking I I can't have the type of partner who wouldn't consider making that type of move for me. Uh, But we kind of discussed this in that episode where we talked about, um, having a supportive partner I forget what it was called but I'll remember by the time you have to link it (laughs) um but yeah where we talked with Maya about yeah so we kind of touched on it on it there but yeah that's just within a close circle of people though so and that's just people who are willing to share that yeah and I'll add too I think I've seen like things come at different points in times where it's like okay we're going to move for this person or, okay, I'm going to pull back in this area so you can pursue these other things. You know, I've seen it kind of flow and it's, I haven't seen as much where it's just like, oh, well, we're not doing anything that this person wants to do Mm -hmm. ever. It's like, okay, well, okay. And this, for these years, it makes sense to be here and do this. Okay. But Mm -hmm. then we'll pause on this so you can pursue X. So I have seen more, I think, flexibility with, our generation. I think it was like that chick angel, but when they got married, her husband, or I think it was before they got married, but he moved out to LA because he's like, this job, I can do it anywhere and make about the same amount of money. So why wouldn't I go over here where you get to pursue your dream at the same time? So sometimes Mm -hmm. it just works out that that's a possibility. But I do think that some people are staunchly against it, you know? (laughs) And so, yeah. Wow. Where they're like, you know, patriarchy and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, which I, I don't know how that will flow going forward. I mean, women, we're getting our education. We have our life experiences. So yes. I don't even know how realistic yeah. that will look going forward. Yeah. And, and it's a case by case basis. Like, like we were saying, it makes sense sometimes and other times it doesn't. So it's like mm-hmm. no judgment if you're in a situation where one of those things can't happen like it's fine Mm -hmm. Um, okay all right so we're gonna move on to Lala's comments or recent commentary on marriage I don't hear people who aren't married saying like I want to get married you just start hearing it less and less like before that was a goal like Mm -hmm. before social media and just the way people interact now I'm not in conversations with people who are talking about like I can't wait to meet someone and get married now people say yeah I want to meet somebody be in a relationship you know have this bond but I don't need the marriage piece to feel Mm -hmm. like it's successful Mm -hmm. and most not saying all be careful my words most married people that I know are miserable and not happy and don't want to be married they would prefer to be single and what's happening is people look at the stats and they say oh well divorce rates are going down but the issue is less people are getting married people don't want to get married 
He said, whoa. <laughs> All right. So what are your thoughts? I don't think so. But also the people around Lala might might be that way. Like they might not want to get married. But as a regular person <laughs> out here, I think people do want to get married the same as before. Um, I don't know if it's the exact same, but I haven't noticed like a a difference in how much people want to get married I think it is still very much the goal for a lot of people Mm. yeah so I agree but disagree with her Mm -hmm. I don't know if the goal to get married is equal amongst men and women okay And this is just from what I've heard of my friends in the dating space right now is that the women are eager for committed relationships to lead to engagement and marriage. And the men are like, eh, I'm good. I have time or I don't need to get married at all. Even willing to have kids. Um, So yeah, I don't know that it's equal I will say that I do think that culturally there is a bit of a shift in terms of the level of importance in terms of being married. Obviously, it depends on the circles that you run within, but I think overall in American culture, uh, I think it's not as taboo if you aren't in, in pursuit of marriage or if you are willing to have kids and not be married. I just don't think it's as much of a priority, but I do think that people still want to be married yeah yeah I I agree I think the desire is still there but I don't at least from what I know and I'll speak maybe for the black community more so than all of America because I I think there just are differences um like because of history there are actual differences but I feel like growing up I did always see this trope of oh, men don't want to get married as much as women do. So I think that's still the same or Mm. similar to what it used to be. Like, so I don't see much of a difference. Um, Maybe what I do see a difference in is more men are very vocal about why people should be getting married. You know, like more, more black men are vocal about, I love being married. I love having a partnership, you know, uh, because we have podcasts, <laughs> which men are good and bad, <laughs> depending on which podcast we stumble across. But yeah, I think people, that's what I've seen at least, but mm-hmm. this is just my world. I might consume certain content that has me thinking this way. I might be surrounded by certain people who make me think this way Mm -hmm. and that's the case with Lala like I think maybe the people she's surrounded by don't necessarily care especially based on what age they might be who knows yeah and I was thinking too that you know I don't know if the people who are in amazing marriages I don't know if they're like tooting their horns or bragging about it it's just like oh it is what it is I'm in a fulfilling loving relationship and I think people may be more likely to be vocal or complain when something's bad. Well, I don't know, miserable. y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that hasn't been my experience. What I've seen, where yeah. most of the married people I know seem miserable. If anything, I hear single people saying, "You don't want to be out here in these single streets." Like, I do hear that a lot too. I hear that more than I hear that married people are single. I mean, are miserable. Yeah. You remember when Steph Curry's dad and mom announced their divorce and this man made a whole thread and was like, I think Steph's, Steph Curry's dad name is Del Curry, I believe. Mm-hmm. But he was like, Dell, trust me, you don't want to be out here. And he made this long Twitter thread about all the reasons why he should stay in that marriage with his wife. Um, I think they did end up getting divorced though. So his thread didn't help. But yeah, do you... <laughs> What do you think is the biggest thing contributing to this, like maybe decline in marriage rates? Uh, If I had to pick one thing, I think our trajectories are just different than they were, call it 30 to 40 years ago. Yeah, Young people are giving more space and opportunity to find themselves, have life experience. People are pushed to go to college and military. By the time you finish that up, 
I hear people be encouraged to, you know, enjoy your time, enjoy your youth, then get married. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're maybe mid to late 20s by the time you're thinking about a longer term commitment. And then you're still like, okay, I have to find the person now. So you could be 30 plus. I also think you're older, you may be vetting better. The previous generation was getting married a lot younger and probably not vetting in the way that we would getting married in our thirties. So yeah, that's what I think is one of the biggest factors, just different time. I mean, imagine myself getting married at 21 versus 31. Mm -hmm. It would be completely different. I think. I think women's standards are different now. I think, uh, and not obviously not all women, but I do think it's more acceptable to be like, I'm going to wait for someone who checks the boxes, who I feel good around, who I'm safe around, who is prioritizing. I think we're prioritizing healthy relationships as opposed Mm. to, oh, this person sees me, they like me, um, you know, they got a good job (laughs) or whatever people used to look for back then. I'm sorry if you're of that generation. I don't mean to insult anybody, but you know, like I think we're very much prioritizing healthy connections and because of that it is going to take longer because even if someone is an amazing person they might not the things that they would require you to sacrifice might not be the things you want to sacrifice like how you were saying earlier that it might not be a sacrifice to this person if they want to do it okay well these sacrifices that this man's requiring of me I don't want to do them but this guy he's requiring things that I can see myself doing and so we're a better match we're more aligned with each other so I think that's something that's different but also women can do more for ourselves and that's a great thing you know like we're not reliant on men which gives us the space to vet more than I think could have you know happened in the past so yeah I'd agree with that those are my little thoughts on it Well, um, that was a good conversation. We're going to switch things up a little bit and go into our last segment of the episode. And today we're going to do girlfriend check-in. And that's where we pull a question either from a conversation starter game or from a website that we found. And we check in with each other and talk about it. So today's question is, what motivates you to work hard? Hmm. I think I have a few things. So the first is me thinking about the things that I want in the future. So as I've mentioned on the past, I'm a big planner. I'm always thinking about the future. And so I'm thinking about, okay, not just what do I want today for my life to look like for myself, my family, but 10 years from now, which I know sounds kind of crazy for some people to be thinking that far out, but yeah, I'm thinking about Miosha in her 40s and what that's going to look like. And so I'm motivated to do what I need to do now to have the life, you know, looking forward now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I think the other thing is for my family. Um, I have people that depend on me and I want to be able to show up for them. Um, one, a sense of, you know, obligation, but also just, I want to do what I need to do for them. Um, I want to see them happy and smiling. And so, yeah, that's a big motivation for me. And then the last thing is I like feeling productive. Um, I realized within the last year that I, um, I like the feeling of like accomplishment at the end of the day, like if there's a day where I'm like, oh, I didn't do, you know, too much. I'm like, man, I didn't, you know, what I I rested maybe. I'm like, oh, I didn't do enough. But I think I really like the feeling at the end of the day, like, oh, I checked all these boxes. I don't know, it's satisfying at the end of the day, uh, which can be a problem sometimes because then you're (laughs) like- Hearing (laughs) it like, because I know you, I wasn't going to say anything, but it, it landed on my ears kind of funny. I will say that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it, yeah, it can be a problem because, you know, you do need to take rest. But yeah, I just realized that I I like to check the boxes. Yeah. Okay. I, I Listen, 
if you like it, I love it. Actually, no, that kind of is an insult. So <laughs> <laughs> if that's something that drives you to do your best work, then you know what works for you. I think that's a better way of saying it. <laughs> it's not you like it, I love it. I'm not trying to diss my best friend. Oh um, okay, what motivates me to work hard? I think, I, I do think I am driven by accomplishment. Um, and not, not necessarily like day-to-day -day accomplishment, but like if I've been working on something for two years and now it's like really hitting, I live for that moment. Mm -hmm. Or if I started something really small and it's gaining momentum, like that type of stuff really motivates me. And I think also like purpose, like a sense of purpose. So knowing that um, if I do this right, like I accomplish my purpose in the world and other people can benefit from just me doing what I've been called to do or doing what I'm interested in doing, that really motivates me. And lastly, like flexibility. So like you were saying, I'm thinking future me, future me. Um, so I I don't mind resting. <laughs> like I'll, do, I'll do that at, at least once one day a week I do. Cause I, you just, I go hard so much the rest of the days. Like that one day I'm like, nope, I'm not doing anything. But future me wants to do that more. I want the flexibility, the, the flexibility to do that more where I can have those rest days and not feel like, okay, well, the rest of the days I have to be, you know, mm -hmm. working from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. or whatever. So yeah, flexibility to do what I want to do. Yeah. All right. Um, let us know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube, what motivates you to work? Also, let us know your thoughts on Michelle Obama's comments and Lala Anthony's comments. And thank all of you guys for tuning into this episode of the Girlfriends and Goals podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Girlfriends and Goals podcast to share your thoughts on this topic if you're not watching on YouTube. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do that now. And don't forget to rate, review, and share. Until next time, bye. Bye.